A year after the U.S. evacuation of Afghanistan, a new blame game is emerging now between the White House, the State Department, and the House GOP. Yeah, this comes after a new report by the House Foreign Affairs Committee. This uh, report is very critical of the Biden administration for how that withdrawal took place. Let's bring in Representative John Katko, GOP ranking member of the House uh, Committee on Homeland Security, and uh, a guest of the show once again here. So good to have you back on the program. Let's go to, to Afghanistan here first, and let's go pre-9-11. Do, do you believe, I mean, what should the American people know uh, about where Afghanistan is right now compared to pre-9-11 when it comes to, um, with regard to terrorism? Well, good afternoon, my friends, and uh, happy Friday Eve. Uh, as far as what's going on with Afghanistan, uh, it does seem to be that we've created a vacuum. And the best indicator of that is that uh, the al-Qaeda leader was taken out. He was living in downtown Kabul uh, just a few weeks ago. And one of their leading members of their government is a Haqqani network leader who was a terrorist group. And it seems like they're getting back to their pre-9-11 footing where terrorist groups are getting more comfortable living out in the open there and the, what they're doing with respect to women's rights and uh, taking them away after all the progress made over the last 20 years. It does seem to be that the Taliban is slowly but methodically tightening the grip on the country and that and it's allowing the terrorist uh, ac actions to uh, breed once again there. Congressman, uh, we mentioned following this report, there is a lot of finger pointing that's going on. The White House has called this report partisan with inaccurate characterizations. They say cherry picked information and false claims. And we also hear from the State Department saying that some of this deadline in the agreement was inherited by this administration from the Trump administration. Should both administrations shoulder some of the brain, uh, blame for the situation that's going on right now in that country? Absolutely. Listen, when you were just describing that, I was going to say no one's ever, no one's right and no one's no one's completely right and no one's completely wrong. But the bottom line is, collectively, we have our policy in Afghanistan has failed. If you look at uh, the pri uh, President Trump's decision to move, pull out of Afghanistan, I, I think a lot of people disagree with that, including myself. You keep a military presence there in a safe, safe and effective manner and not engage going out proactively, but having that presence there that allows us to develop the intelligence networks, that's really important. I think that was a mistake to say we were going to pull out of that. You, you mentioned the southwest border uh, just a moment ago, and you all talked about numbers and increased numbers of people uh, on the terrorist watch list who are, have been coming in through uh, ports of entry. Um, do you tie that directly to what we are seeing in Afghanistan? And do you have evidence um, of, in fact, that what's happening in Afghanistan is resulting in those increased numbers? Well, we definitely have facts, and the facts are this. Uh, we've had 66 people on the terror watch list that have been seized at the south, southern border in the last year. 66. That's more than 10 times what we have, or five, more than 10 times than that we've had in the last five years combined. So the, the terrorist-related uh, people are exploiting the gaps in the southern border. So it stands to reason if they're doing that and people, terrorists want to get into the United States to create mayhem, then uh, what's going on in Afghanistan is directly related to that. And I can give you a couple of examples. We disrupted a terror plot a few, uh, a few months ago that was involving the southwest border where they were going to come and assassinate former President uh, Bush. We interrupted another terror plot in Virginia on the 4th of July where people that had come across uh, this, into this country illegally we're going to create a mass shooting incident at a fireworks uh, display in, in Virginia. So there's definitely ties and that's why FBI Director Christopher Wray is saying that there's serious security concerns. That's, there, there really is a time we have to look at it globally and again instead of finger pointing we just got to recognize the gaps and try and fill them. Hey, one thing Congressman, those 66, do we know who they are and where they are? We do know who they are and we do know where they're from and just remember though there's documented because of the, the video surveillances on the borders that 900,000 or more individuals have come across the border and gotten away. So the people that we've seized, it stands to reason that an equal number are probably into this country. And that is, uh, that is a ticking time bomb. That's something that keeps me up, keeps me up a lot at night, that's for sure. Well, Congressman John Katko, we would so certainly appreciate you being with us today. We know you've been a friend of the show and we appreciate your insight. And uh, thanks for being here today. Anytime, my friends. Thank you very much. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here. 
to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.